let's call this the first spring 2024 tour of my backyard and now my front yard garden. Hey guys, it's been a minute since I have given you any updates from my backyard garden. And there's many reasons for that. I say this all the time, life has just been life and we've been gone most weekends. So a lot of what I've been doing has just been in bits and pieces throughout the week. And this video is going to reflect that. So just bear with me. There's going to be a compilation of some updates that I made in the last several weeks um, since spring started and I started bringing in my transplants. So what we're going to do is just take a walk around the garden, a stroll, if you will, and just see what's going on now. And I'll be doing a few like little, what do you call them? I'll go back in time to when I came out here and did little things here and there. So. A compilation is what you have today. But let's call this the first spring 2024 tour of my backyard and now my front yard garden. You guys, yesterday was a very, very bizarre day. Or the evening really was. Look at my neighbor's yard. That looks really horrendous. That's crazy. Anyway, it was just a really crazy day weather-wise. So I came out here to pick some kale. You guys saw that. And then soon after that, the crazy weather started. Literally, it started with the thunder and the lightning. And then it started to rain, which I love. But then there was hail, which none of us were expecting. I was actually on the phone with a neighbor and we all noticed it at the same time, like, oh my God, there's hail. So I was coming out here just to check on things, just to, you know, survey, the area because a lot of times kale can destroy anything that's growing but everything looks good um, out here to right now it's just a little bit too wet to come out and actually do anything so um, I'm gonna like wait until excuse my shadow wait until the afternoon later on in the afternoon see if things dry out a little bit because there are some things that I need to do out here and we'll see if I can get out here and do those things. If not, we got the whole weekend. This is our first free weekend for a while. So I'll just come out here tomorrow or Sunday and get it done if I can't do it today. It's a really, really gorgeous day today, you guys, after we got some amazing rain on Thursday, some kind of crazy weather with the hail and everything, but y'all know where I'm gonna be all day today. I'm up here in my front bed, um, my front garden bed, it's a mess, I know, like there's a lot of weeds and it's hard to keep it under control, but I'm up here because I found these little, these are volunteer tomato plants. I know that they're cherry tomatoes because I had um, some hanging baskets up here last year that I decided to move because I didn't like the way it was looking. Look, there's another one right there, more cherry tomatoes. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pull most of these out because I don't want cherry tomatoes up here. I'm gonna pull them out and I'm gonna take them into the backyard. Um, I've already prepared a spot for them, but I'm gonna put them back there and see how they do. I got out a few of those tomato plants from up front and I'm gonna stick them right over there um, and see which one, I only need one or two, see which two grow best um this i made this little makeshift arch because i saw someone um growing tomatoes across an arch and they were so pretty so i'm doing that here and then most of my tomatoes are over there and i'm gonna do it those are beef steaks that are gonna grow across to that arch right there so um this one right here i originally put out because i have some pole beans all my a lot of beans are planted here and on the other side for three sisters that i showed y'all the other day but right here i have a couple of pole beans planted around this one and that'll climb up this way and then i'll put my cherry tomatoes and then climb up that way and use the fence a little bit as well so i'm gonna get on that too one other thing to say really quickly i'm gonna try to talk loud um but it's very very windy out here and so you may have a hard time hearing me i'm gonna try my very best though so i wanted to start over here in this section 
where really trying hard to start a strawberry patch. That I, I threw out some strawberry seeds, which I didn't even know you could start strawberries from seed. I threw some out only in the exposed that little section right there. And then nasturtium to help out with the right there. Excuse my shadow. Um, and then I forgot what else I planted over there. I think that's it. Just nasturtiums, cucumbers, and strawberries. I may have planted a bulb of garlic over here because, as I've mentioned before, I'm growing alliums all throughout the garden amongst the vegetables um, to try to help with pests mainly. So that's that little bed. Um, I also planted a strawberry in this cardboard box. Let me see. Let me see if I can show you the little. <laughs> it's coming up. See it right there. Anyway. So that is a little strawberry and I planted it in this box because when I was planting the potatoes over there, which we're going to get to in just a second, one of the options was to plant those in cardboard boxes. But then I thought, why would I do that? And I had those empty, um, those empty grow bags. So that's what I did. All of this open area right here. A lot of weeds go back in there because wherever there's bare ground, something wants to grow. It's going to either be grass, weeds, or whatever you plant there, whether it's flowers or food. So I came over here and I did weed this area. And then I came out and I just threw some block seeds. So we'll see if those come up or not. Mm, that right there is lemon grass that I had to cut back. This all, all of this brown that you see, you hear how crunchy that is? All of that froze and there's two plants in front of back there. See it? Well, that froze and so I discovered through that experience that lemongrass, dried lemongrass makes really good mulch so I just, when I cut this back, I just laid it out over here, just laid it on the ground and I noticed that I was going to see bugs on this side um, and of course the lemongrass always comes back you can see it's beautifully beautifully blowing in the the bugs don't like the grass. Bugs love wood chip mulch where I am, but they don't like the strong smell of the grass, which is the same reason that I use the alliums every year because they don't like the strong smell. And the same reason that I interplant with marigolds. Again, they don't like the strong smell. Moving on, my potatoes are doing pretty well. I have a little bit of research to do because there's something going on with the leaves here. And I don't know what that is. So I gotta research that today because they're doing well and I have six up front that I planted and those are all doing really well too. Look at these babies. These are beets. I never thought I could grow beets and I didn't do well this time either um, because I just kind of forgot about them. Let's see if I can show you. Here's another one. It's completely wide open. But these leaves are edible. I don't know if that's a good, a good bug, a ladybug, or if that's something I need to get rid of. Research, always, always with the research. So, yeah, I gotta come in here and figure out what that is, unless y'all know and you're gonna tell me. So anyway, as I was saying about these beets, they, <laughs> Lola just said how to y'all. They, the greens are edible, so we'll probably take those inside and have them with some other, mixed in with some other greens. There's another one over there. Um, but the reason that I left these beets that clearly are not edible out here is because I really wanted them to flower so that I could gather more seeds. So that's what the flower looks like on the beet. It's very pretty. Very, very pretty. And then I'm just going to let it go to seed and hopefully I'll get a ton of seeds out of this. So that's it with the beets and the potatoes. Um, only other thing to tell you about this section is that I can't plant here now. I can't plant any veggies in this section right here because I had a major ant problem and nothing was taken care of it. Not the spinosad, not the BT, I'm sorry, not BT, not the diatomaceous earth um, because those things don't kill the, the, the queen and therefore kill the colony. So I had to put down some actual, um, I had to actually treat for those ants. So this whole area, probably from about here over to where the sage bush starts 
I'm not going to plant any vegetables, any herbs, anything like that. Now, I did come over here and just throw out some mustard seeds. So, what you see, like, that is a mustard seed. Um, all of, Most of what you see here is mustard and a few little weeds in there. And then I did throw out some, I just, like, tossed them, literally tossed them. And same thing right here. I tossed in some zinnia seeds. Um, so, that's all I'm going to do on this side. And then, of course, the sage. I love those. Look at it. It's so pretty. The purple flowers are just gorgeous. I was trying to find one where you could see the bud. I actually just did a blog post on this where normally I cut the sage back and I just use it for smudge sticks. Um, I do cook with it a little bit, but I made a rosemary and sage infused oil for my skin and my scalp it is absolutely amazing but so flowers on this plant are beautiful the leaves i had to cut it back because it was getting way out of hand the leaves are just gorgeous so that also helps with pale pests so i love that plant as well nothing's gonna go here um unless again i put some more flowers there because there were ants in there as well when i cut some of the sage down I went ahead and dried it out and used that dry sage and it's the same way I used the lemon grass I just talked about to just kind of cover up this section because the, the bugs won't like it <laughs> yes. oh my god these things are huge look at this look at the stalk oh and the smell like I love the smell of onions and garlic the animals and the buggers not so much this one even has like I think that's called escape on garlic it's called escape I don't know what it's called on here but I think it's pretty cool it's pretty awesome um not much else going on on this side this these are these tweets that you see are basically my this is where all my peppers were last year and I tried this thing where you just cut the stems back um, to let them overwinter in the ground because we live in a mild climate where it doesn't get too um, cold. Well, that didn't happen. The overwintering just did not work. So all of these have to come up. I've already pulled up two, I think. All the rest of them have to come up. And then this will be my okra patch. You can see I've started the okra already. So over here, I'm going to be doing a version of Three Sisters. I'll show you the other part, portion of the garden of Three Sisters with the American Indian Three Sisters. This is the, I'm calling it the African Three Sisters because what it's going to be is okra that will grow tall. Like y'all have seen my okra, sometimes they're taller than me. So it'll be the okra that grows tall. It will be the black eyed peas growing in between and it will be a melon of some sort. It's either going to be a baby watermelon or a cantaloupe that'll grow in with those. And so they kind of take the place of the corn, the pole beans, and the squash. So that's what's going to be going on there. Um, and as you can see, there's more marigolds planted with wherever, you know, wherever you look. And this right here, I'm calling it an amaranth patch. And I'm going to leave it. Um, I didn't really want the amaranth to grow over here again, but I talked about this in a video before where you got to be careful what you call weeds. Amaranth is actually, I bought it for the flower. And then I realized that the greens are edible. As a matter of fact, this is Kalalu, um, Caribbean dish. So once I realized that, we started eating them. And then I realized that the flowers, like this is the beginning of some little flowers. And you can see they kind of look like little grains. That's because when they flower, People do use them as grains, just kind of like quinoa. So only thing with amaranth is that it easily self-seeds. And that's why you see all of this right here. Like I haven't put an amaranth seed out here in two years. But because the wind blows and these things just fly all over the place, I have tons of amaranth everywhere. I have to pull them out. Tatsue growing, some little chives growing, marigolds. That is a sunflower. It's going to be a um, dwarf sunflower. It's yellow and very pretty. So that's supposed to be there and there on the corners. But that one on that side, just it just does not want to grow. More marigolds. Um, I'll probably thin these out and put them in other, other areas of the garden. We well, see pots everywhere. 
those are most likely herbs. So that one is lavender. I had to replant because the freeze kills pretty much everything. And I think there's dill there. And on the other side, there's rosemary. This one is oregano. More. <laughs> These things, they have to be thinned out. That's more marigolds that I can place in other places. And more chives. These these little scapes these little they're gonna be flowers but they're so pretty and they smell oh smells so good smells so good this right here is cabbage and y'all i think i need to harvest these at least one of them because the cabbage worms the loopers the beetles are starting to get to them look at this leaf right here yeah, they're starting to get to them. And what I don't want to do is leave them in here so long that they get to the inside head. So I think that one's probably okay for now. You can see there's a little bit of damage on the inside leaf. But this one needs to come out because there's a ton of damage on here. And yes, I planted them close together, mainly because I don't have a ton of space. So I'm tr I try to maximize as much as I possibly can. And then when the bugs do come, and they eat a lot of something like this one i just leave it let them continue to eat off this plant instead of taking this plant out and then it'll start it'll move to the surrounding plants because that one's all done like it's gone if i pull it out if i leave it there they're gonna keep gnawing on this chewing on this like look at some of these leaves this is completely skeletonized it's completely gone so what i'll probably do is just like trim this up a little bit so that it's not touching the other one or the other two and then let those grow let the bugs have that one and let the rest of them grow. on the side i'm doing more of the three sisters with the okra this is um, a rainbow lettuce it's just a bunch of different types of lettuce in one seed packet and i just come out here and throw some seeds in there and go we just have some of this um with easter dinner it's delicious so good so fresh nothing here yet honestly a lot of what's going on in the in the garden is there's cilantro a lot of what's going on in the garden is going on underground not so much above ground but things are starting to happen like this is going to be a bean patch i have pole beans planted here i have bush beans planted here and that's a bush bean i think most of these are bush beans and there's two pole beans planted close to this little makeshift arch here then here are my two melons that are eventually going to go down this one's struggling just a little bit so let's get that and this planter with some tomatillos that are from store-bought tomatillos i just need to come in here and kind of pick this out because there's a bunch of them in like one area same thing and here are the tomatoes that I planted from the front yard. So now, on this arch, yeah, it's gonna be like, I might have to do another arch because the tomatoes are gonna climb up this way. I believe those are cherry tomatoes and the pole beans are gonna climb up this way and they might meet each other in the middle and I don't know if they like each other so much. So we'll see how that goes. Then, like I said, there's a lot going on underground. I planted more asparagus back here because in the front beds, they're doing pretty well, but I didn't realize how big they get. So I planted some back here, planted some chamomile. And this whole section, you guys, let's go back to these tomatoes for a second. I said that those were volunteers from us that I had hanging in front, but now I don't know because everywhere that I put, in, everywhere that I added compost to the dirt, I have tomatoes popping up. So like, all of that, those are tomatoes. So I think if the deductive reasoning says <laughs> it's coming from the compost. This is not a big deal to me. The more tomatoes, the better. But what I would do is just come in and get them out. This is the only other section of the garden. It's there's pretty much going on. There's a few beets in there. And then um, I'm going to plant a couple of rows, a couple of more rows of cauliflower and broccoli and possibly cabbage because I can't plant them back on the other side anymore due to rotating frost. Here it is again. There's some more tomatoes in here. I didn't plant these tomatoes in here. 
Um, I believe I planted eggplant in here, but there's clearly, let's count them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tomato plants. And oh my gosh, so I'm probably gonna dig those out of there, pot them up, and give them to people. Because, yeah, we had way too many tomatoes last year. So this time I think I'm gonna like pair it down a little bit, share with more people. Now, what I did plant in here, let's go back down here. Oh, what I thought I planted in here was eggplant. And that looks like one right there. I don't know what all of these are, but I'm just, since it's in a pot and it's contained, I'm just going to let these things go until I know for sure what they are. And then I'll either thin them or pull them out or whatever I want to do at that point. Moving on. Tons of peppers. I just told y'all about my peppers that did not overwinter like I expected them to, like people, like the people said they would. So I have peppers planted all along the back, back behind these, um, behind and around this garlic patch. And then there's marigolds planted in here. Same concept again, just to try to keep the bugs away. Here's more garlic amongst my collard green trees. These things are trees now. Um, I actually pulled from all four of these for dinner, Easter dinner. Um, so they're looking, especially the big ones, are looking pretty sparse. But these things are going. Like they're just, they're growing and I'm just gonna look. So anyway, back to the peppers. Uh, there's banana peppers. All of these are bell peppers. And I was doing this weird thing where I planted yellow red bell, yellow bell peppers, red bell peppers. Um, I, one is a chocolate bell. That one back there is a chocolate bell. And that's the only one that doesn't, that is not going to fit what I'm about to tell you. I was doing red, yellow, and green bell pepper seeds separately. The bottom line is they're all the same pepper. They're all a green pepper. They're green when they're you know not completely ripe then they turn yellow then orange and then red so i don't know why i didn't think about that and i did all this all the i just did the most all of those are the same they're green bell peppers and we'll just pick them at different stages of their life this one is a shishito and this is the only plant that i actually bought at a nursery i'm just pulling off some leaves down here low this is the plant, only plant that I actually bought at a nursery. Everything else I started from seed. Um, that one is a habanero. This one is a habanero. These three are cayenne. So that's it for the pepper patch. And then coming over here, of course, I just showed you my collars. Here are my Roma tomatoes. And they're looking absolutely amazing. I think they're growing faster than any of the other tomatoes, but Got a little leaf issue there. We'll still figure out what's going on with that. A little bit there. Maybe overwatering. Y'all know I'm bad about that. And then marigolds planted in with them again because I want to address these things. Again. This video is turning out to be pretty long. I thought it was going to be real quick, but I mean, I'm showing y'all everything. This part is interesting. Garlic in and around. You can see this bits of shards of grass over here because I did bring some grass into these two beds, this one and um, to act as much as I said before. So tomatoes over here this year. These two little ones right here, they're tiny. Those are beefsteaks. They were way bigger in my starter pot. Um, and then I planted some calendula on either side of them. Of course, the garlic is gonna help with pests as well. And that is a Campari tomato. So the goal is to have the beef steaks, the beef steaks grow up and over this arch, kind of like the one I showed you a minute ago for the cherries. And then the Camparis, I might put another one up. If not, the Camparis will just grow up and we'll use the fence as a trellis. Same thing on the other side. Basil, calendula, marigolds, and there is one garlic plant over here. Again, all to help with the pests. That one little plant you see there, that's an artichoke. We'll see if that survives the summer. 
this beef steak is much bigger. Look how big this one is versus those other two. We just looked at the little runs. But I'm just gonna give them a chance to let them do their thing. Um, there's a Campari, another Campari right there. So it'll grow up the fence and meet up with the other Campari on the other side. Same thing with the beef steak. It'll grow up the arch, meet up with the other beef steak on the other side. More calendula, basil. I think I already said that. There is, there are marigolds all along the edge here. Like I literally just took a frozen, dried up frozen marigold bud and just went all over the garden and just sprinkled, just sprinkled. And wherever they come up is where they come up, they'll be fine and they'll help the bugs. Kale, same thing. There used to be chard right here and we planted all of this garlic in between the kale and the chard. Now the chard is going to be right here amongst the weeds. Let's see if I can show you what's not like that is going to be chard. That's chard. There's a few of them in there. I sold quite a lot, but they had to fight the weeds because I wasn't getting to them fast enough. So, you know, nature's going to do what it's going to do. And here's the very last part. Oh no, I have something else to tell you about that banana tree back there. That's going to be the last thing. But this is the Three Sisters ring. So I planted originally nine months ago. Some type of <laughs> got to the corn and like bit it down to a nub. Um, let's see. I think I might have pulled the two that were bitten. But they got like this high and something like it's out. Same thing, I like this. So these are new ones that I came back and planted again. So right now I think there are, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Corn plants in here. So they should easily pollinate themselves. And then back in the back, spaghetti squash. That's spaghetti squash. And there's another one. And this is yellow and I'm a little bit concerned about these because I've already been getting flowers but look at them all so I'm not sure um looks like they were male flowers anyway yeah so not really a big deal those first few flowers but I need them to be flowers so they can do their job of covering up the soil so the beans are already coming up just a couple there's one and these are pole beans so they're planted all the way around the corn, all throughout the corn. So we'll see how that goes. Now, let's take a look at this banana tree. This banana tree, I stuck this pup here after the freeze. My banana tree was over in this corner, and a couple of things were happening. It was completely exposed to the elements, and of course, it died. So I came over here and I dug it up and it turns out that there were three pups over here. Now this tree I've had for, I don't know, about five, six years. No, maybe five years. And every year it has frozen and every year it has come back. I didn't think it would come back this year. I cut this tree down, dug up pups and given them to neighbors. And when I say cut them up and given them to neighbors, I mean like a ton of them. I have maybe four or five neighbors that I gave two and three pups to each. Um, so I had that over here. And then those are the little, let's see if I can get in close on it. Those are little they're elephant ears. So we had elephant ears here. And literally right next to it was like the banana leaf. I keep saying banana leaf. It's a banana tree. It's truly a banana tree. But anyway, um, the sprinkler was having trouble reaching the rest of the yard because of those two plants that were growing like mad. They get really, really big. Um, so the sprinklers were having trouble reaching, that sprinkler was having trouble reaching, you know, the rest of the yard on this side. And that sprinkler covers all of this as well. So I thought to myself, let me just go ahead and dig these up there. Right now they're frozen, like they're not gonna do anything. Two of them, I just got rid of. Um, and I got rid of them. They go in the compost. And one, I said, okay, well, let's pull this one over here so it won't interfere. It's still going to fall in the spring, but it won't interfere with any of the spring leaves because this one is far enough away. See right there? It's far enough away. 
that the tree itself won't inhibit the water from going where it needs to go. So there's that little planet I thought was completely done. It just wants to grow. So that is about it. Um, the only thing, like, oh, okay, so I didn't tell you what was in these pots. So this one this in the middle is garlic. And then all the way, all around it is carrots. So that's it. Also, I'm trying my very best to grow two rhizomes. Ginger. You can see nothing's happening. There's no greenery in there. Like that. On the other side, I have some turmeric. And the same thing, nothing's happening. I'm trying to do this one on a wing and a prayer because, is that the right saying? A wing and a prayer? I was going to say a hope and a prayer, a wing and a prayer, because I like, I just don't know what I'm doing there. And then I just have this lone carrot, <laughs> this lone carrot. The greens look amazing. And these are delicious, by the way. Carrot greens are delicious. Um, but that's the only carrot growing there. I'm going to leave it alone until it's ready to take. So that's pretty much it. Other than compost. And trust me, you don't want to see that. Um, I have a few little uh, shorts uh, videos about composting. But if you're interested in that whole process, um, let me know. And I'll do a video on that as well. Otherwise, like I said, that's pretty much it for this update. Um, let me know if you guys are getting anything out of these videos. If you like these videos, you want to see more or less of anything, including the home decor and the cooking. Um, just let me know in the comments what you want to see, and I aim to please. But you're going to get these gardening videos even way because this is always an adventure and there's always something to learn out here. So, till next time, you guys, thank you so much yet again for tuning in, and hope to see you back here soon. Till next time, bye.